Hi, do you have a disc that won't read? Maybe it's scratched or badly damaged? Let's take a look at this disc here on the other camera. As you can see on this disc, there is a real big scratch, which is also in a circular fashion. This actual scratch will stop the drive from reading a chunk of the data on this disc. Let me pop it in a drive and show you. So, as you can see, we've got the drive here and I can open the disc. And you can see on this disc, we've got a folder with lots of uh, pictures in. Now, if I try and access some of these files, we'll find out that the actual drive won't respond. Again, you can see here, just clicking on one of the files that I already know is damaged. The computer has now become very unresponsive, which makes reading the disk, copying all of the files from the disk very difficult. So what we're gonna do is use a utility on Windows here called DD Rescue. Now DD Rescue doesn't run natively on Windows, so we're gonna use SIGWIN. So DD Rescue can be run on both Linux and Mac operating systems and on Windows here using SIGWIN. Let me show you how to uh, set that up on SIGWIN. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a link here on how to install SIGWIN onto Windows. But when you get to the installation, you'll want to search for a package called DD Rescue, as you can see here, and actually install this as part of the installation. The next thing you'll need to do then is launch SIGWIN with administrative privileges. Um, you can do this by creating a shortcut and then selecting the run as administrator option on the shortcut or searching on the taskbar and doing a right click and saying to run as administrator. The DD Rescue will need administrative privileges to be able to access the optical drive. So when we then run SIGWIN, you'll see we end up with this uh, command prompt and the commands in here are GUN utilities. So same commands as you would normally run under a Linux machine. But for the purpose of this, what we're going to do, first of all, is identify where the optical drive is and a simple LS on dev and then SR star. So you can see on my machine, I've actually got two optical drives reported. And in this case, I'm going to use SR zero, which will be the first drive. So what we're then going to do to actually uh, read the disk in is run this command here, DD rescue, tac n space, tac b 2048, which is the sector size of the optical disk. And then the device SR zero. Um, if you've got multiple drives, you may find that it's actually SR one or even two on your machine. We're then gonna specify the output file in this case, DVD ISO, and a log file for the mapping that DD Rescue runs. Let me run this. So what we can see now is DD Rescue is going to read right the way through the disk. And as we're not trying to read individual files, but read the entire disk, you can see this is going as fast as a drive can actually read. And as we encounter errors, you'll see that it will actually skip over those read the entire disk and then come back to where there was errors. So what we'll do, we'll come back to this in a few moments once it's uh, finished. Okay, let's take a look back. You can see now that we're coming towards the end of the disk and we have less than uh, 30 seconds remaining. And in fact, what we can actually see now is that the DD Rescue is now actually reading back in reverse on the drive. So the laser on the drive has read the disk from the middle out and is now actually reading back this way and is going to attempt to read the sections where the scratch is to. Now, one of the nice things we can do with DD Rescue here is we can actually abort it at any point by pressing Control C. If I do this, you can see it's been interrupted. Now, we can see here, we've got at the moment 46 uh, megabytes or 46,000 kilobytes of data that's not been read back from the disk, but we've read back 98.9%. Now with DD Rescue, we can just restart this. So if I run the same command again, specifying the output file and the same log file, this will actually resume trying to read the sections or the remaining 1% uh, of data that it hasn't got. So we could leave this run overnight, for instance, or even remove the disk from the drive and attempt to polish out the scratch 
and see if we can then read some more data. Um, I don't recommend putting toothpaste on the disc. Um, there seems to be a, a lot of this around. Um, I'm not sure of any benefit there with that. So as we can see here, this is going to take a very long time because the disc is damaged in this point. And it's unlikely that it's going to be able to read through that scratch. So I'm going to terminate this and have a look at the data we've got already. So SIGWIN is output to a folder on the machine here in the SIGWIN installation directory in my home directory. And in here, you can see I've got this uh, DVD ISO file, which we've just read in. Now, what I'm going to do is just double click this in Windows. And Windows has now mounted this as an optical disk. Let's have a look. You see this is now drive G. And in here, I can now access all of the files. It's there. And you can see if I try and access uh, this picture, if I open this with paint, we can see that paint cannot open it, it's not valid, and that's because this file is actually corrupt because some of the data wouldn't read. As this is a disc we've produced for archiving, we've done some additional recording to this disc. On here, we first of all created this uh, listing of all the files, and in here, we've created a SHI-256 hash of every file. So what I can actually do here, is you can see the file in question should have the hash 5b c20c let's go into this folder so if i launch powershell ise so you can now see i've launched powershell into this uh, folder location i can then run the command get file hash and give the file name and we can see this has generated the hash of this file which we can see from the listing on the disk here is incorrect now, in addition to this, we've actually wrote additional recovery information to the disk. So what I'm going to do is create a folder called recovery. I'm going to copy all of the data from the drive or from the image to my machine. I'm then going to take the recovery data and then going to copy the recovery data to the working folder as well. And with this, we've created uh, priority volumes to recover the data or to protect from any data loss. So if I run this up, this will launch a program called QuickPar. And you can see here, we're actually verifying all of the files and it's actually using the recovery information or it will use the recovery information to repair the files. So I'll just scroll through here. So we can see here, these are all the files that didn't read properly. So you can see we've actually got several images that are damaged, including this image DCS0020. If I now run repair, you can see here we're actually running through at uh, like 2.3 gigs a second or 2,300 megabytes a second to rebuild those files using the erasure encoding we've stored on the disk as well. Now, if you're interested in QuickPar, we've actually got another video, which I'll leave a link to that explains how it works and how you can use it I'll leave a link above here and below in the video on this. So you can see here, everything is now repaired and the repair succeeded. So let me close this and we can see we've now got a image 20 is now showing a thumbnail as well. And if I go back into PowerShell and let me rerun the command again. First of all, let me change to the recovery directory and now we'll run the command again. And we can see now that we have got the hash or the correct original hash that we had, um, which we also stored for each file on the disk. So you can see here, it was a 5B43B. And you can see it is 5B43. We have the exact same hash, proving that we've got the original data back using the recovery information. So, what can you do if you don't actually have recovery information on the disk? As I actually pointed out here, we can just resume the recovery. So if this was me and I didn't have recovery information, I'd look to take the disk back out from the drive 
and now I'd be looking to actually remove the scratch from the disc having recovered as much information as I can. So you could actually take maybe a Dremel or some slight abrasive material and look to polish the disc to remove this. Um, if it is a very valuable disc, it would be worthwhile taking it to a specialist store uh, somewhere that perhaps sells recycled um, game discs. Um, they often have machines for resurfacing the disc and for a small charge will actually repair the damage on the disc. But what we can do is attempt to remove this scratch and then reread the disc and see if we can actually get back any more data, knowing that we'll be adding to it and not risking damaging the entire disc as we've read everything we can already from the disc. So thank you for making it to uh, the end of the video. I'll leave here again links to how to install Sigwin and also how to uh, use QuickPAR to recover and protect data with erasure encoding. Um, hope you found this useful. Thank you very much.